Revenant is upon us. And with it, we have an amazing brand new artifact. We're going to read the TWAB today. I'll also leave a link down below for you guys to play catch up and kind of go back over things as well. We're just going to go in a linear order. Kind of the most important things change. Now, the elemental focuses for this episode will be Stasis, Arc, and Void. Act 1 will feature the most Stasis mods we have ever added to an artifact. Stasis fans rejoice. Frost Armor plays a key role in the artifact's build crafting, granting you increased bonuses to Stasis. And while you're getting in close with the protection of Frost Armor, you also gain increased close range combat potency. Shotguns and SMGs are picking up some anti-champion capabilities, as well as a couple of finisher focus mods. It would also be a great time to bring your favorite grenade launchers up to light level and live out your arterialist fantasy. Oh yeah. Now breaking down column one. We have our anti-barrier scout rifles, overload submachine guns, unstoppable post rifle, anti-barrier shotguns, overload, breach loaded grenade launcher. I'm going on to column two, one with frost. While frost armor is active, stasis weapons gain increased reload speed and stability. Stasis swords will gain increased guard resistance. Killing Breeze, Rapid Weapon Final Blows grant you a bonus to mobility. Weapon Final Blows with the Dark Ether Reaper origin trait count as more than one. Hans Ether Generator, Dark Ether Reaper origin trait has a chance to spawn an extra Dark Ether charge. Weapons with the Dark Ether Reaper origin trait are overcharged when that modifier is active. Fell the Revenant, deal increased weapon damage to Scorn. Now, while wearing the Shade Stalker armor, it'll increase the bonus damage. Rapid Impact, dealing damage with a grenade launcher, will temporarily increase the reload speed of grenade launchers. Oh, that's gonna be this gonna be a juicy one right here, guys. Especially those field tested grenade launchers. I'm gonna hit that cap, but no problem. Over in column three, Wind Chill. Rapid Stasis Weapon Precision Hits will grant you a stack of frost armor. Rapid hits from weapons with the Dark Ether Reaper Origin trait will grant you more stacks of Frost Armor. And the boost for this, dealing Stasis Weapon damage, you slow targets as a chance to spawn a Stasis Shard. Interesting. Already at the top of my head here, guys, our Wicked Implement. That really wasn't too crazy at the time. Because, you have to keep in mind, we're also going to have Anti-Barrier Scout Rifle. Wicked implement and also make use of all those stasis benefits as well. I think that's gonna be a top pick. Now, going into our next one, crystalline converter. Gather stasis shards to gain stacks of crystalline converter. Your next powered stasis melee hit will create stasis crystals equal to the number of stacks you have. And with the boost effect, stasis weapon final blows after activating your class ability will spawn a stasis shard. Nice. Total carnage. After finishing, finishing a powerful combatant, you'll gain temporary damage resistance. So you're going to stack that essentially um, with your class item artifact to kind of get that overshield while doing a finisher. And that should work out pretty well. While you have two or more Shade Stalker armor pieces equipped, after finishing a powerful combatant, you'll gain increased temporary damage resistance and replenish health. Ooh. <laughs> This is looking like a pure running gun type of episode, and I'm here for it. Now, power from pain, rapid final blows against weakened combatants will grant you devour. Keep in mind, rapid, so at least two or three against weakened combatants and you get devour. A boost, rapidly defeating weakened combatants will also spawn a void breach. Lastly, over in column three, we have trace evidence. Rapid precision hits or rapid final blows on targets affected by Jolt or Blind will generate Ionic Traces. Boost effect, picking up an Ionic Trace will grant an Armor Charge. Very nice there. Over in Column 4, Armor of Aramis. While Frost Armor is active, taking critical damage from combatants will cause you to emit a Freezing Burst. Oh. <laughs> and the boost increase radius and strength of this Freezing Burst. I think this would be comparable to 
that we currently have in the game with the warlocks when you cast your rift on stasis and you create that freezing burst this should be comparable to that so that should be very nice and even pairing the two together to allow you to just literally freeze everything and then we have crystallized auto loader shattering stasis crystals will release shards of ice that damage and slow targets the boost Shattering any frozen targets and stasis crystals will deal increased damage. Even nicer. Now, um, what is it? Your Burgless Cleave, that stasis bow, can really benefit from this as well. Now, the de debilitating wave. Finishers emit a damaging wave that matches the element of your currently equipped super. Boost. While you have an arc, void, or stasis super equipped, the blast also applies blind for arc. Weaken on Void and Slow, respectively. Very nice. <laughs> uh, stasis is looking good, guys. Arc and Void will be nice, too. But Stasis is going to be the thing, man. Now, Concussive Reload. Using a Grenade Launcher to damage a boss. Damage a champion or break a combatant shield. Weakens them. Let's go. This could be good. Wither Horde can shine again. And a little side note. Pairing that up with your Prismatic, also helping you fill that Prismatic bar faster. Enjoying that Wither Horde. Now boost, using grenade launchers to damage bosses, champions, or to break their shields, will automatically reload stowed weapons. Very good. Retinal Burn, rapid arc weapon precision hits will consume an armor charge to blind the target. The boost, blinding a target this way instead will emit a blinding burst. They don't uh, give us much info here, but I would assume your baseline of a blinding burst, like if you're using your arc subclass, we did those conditions to get a blinding burst, that AoE should be about that range, I would assume. Now, lastly, in our column 5, Brain Freeze. Frozen combatants become surrounded by chilling fog, which slows combatants that aren't already. Now, weapons with the Dark Ether Reaper Origin trait do more damage to frozen combatants. We have Supernova. Picking up a Void Breach will cause your next source of Void damage to create a large Weakening Pulse. Inductive Cosmic Crystal. Your Arc Abilities, Void Abilities, and Weapons with the Dark Aether Reaper Origin Trait do bonus damage to targets that are affected by Stasis Debuff. The boost increased bonus damage to combatants affected by Stasis Debuff. Serve of Cold. Picking up a Stasis Shard will grant you Class Ability Energy. Picking up a Void Breach will grant you Melee Energy interesting here they um didn't include anything here for like an ionic trace or arc this is just stasis and void focus now kinetic impacts same damage with a power grenade launcher will cause the combatant to emit a shock wave that damages nearby combatants this shock wave can stun unstoppable champions <laughs> oh guys these artifacts are looking good and it's about time you know we got some really beefy artifacts just looking at these alone, right? And do keep in mind, these are only the Act 1 artifacts. When Act 2 releases, we'll get another row, and then Act 3, we'll get another row. Just off the Act 1 artifacts, everything is looking good. There's going to be a lot of build diversity, and a lot of good options to take into those hard endgame activities, like the Grandmasters. Now, we have some exotic armor tuning for revenant we have a lot to cover in this week in destiny so let's jump right into the exotic armor changes for revenant starting with our hunters lucky pants longer one of the more complicated exotic armor pieces and the limitations were necessary because of the maximum strength of its perk unfortunately the high-end strength of lucky pants is causing constraints in terms of other pve balancing we have decided to kill two hive moths with one shot and reduce the complexity while bringing down the maximum potency. To offset this, we have also added some new benefits to the exotic, which would be especially nice for our movement focused hand cannon users who enjoy Stompy 5, which they also improved airborne effectiveness and handling. Now we get the movement bonuses, including increased side distance and sprint speed when a hand cannon is equipped. Airborne effectiveness bonus is active whenever a hand cannon is equipped to it, not just when the illegally modded holster buff is active. No longer requires the hand cannon to be matched to the super damage type or kinetic to receive the PvE damage buff. 
out of luck cooldown will only trigger if you reach seven stacks of the pve damage buff before swapping off the weapon where time expires now the nerf maximum damage has been decreased from 600 percent to 250 to 450 percent that's that's pretty huge guys pretty huge but i do wonder is it huge enough to for any future contest modes to then you know make lucky pants not be disabled that's to be to be seen since we're gonna have contest mode for the new dungeon now young ahamkar is fine wanted to take another swing at these to better preserve their previous pv gameplay while keeping a handle on their effectiveness in pvp once again, provides ability energy on trip mine grenade hit instead of final blows. Provides 33% grenade energy in PvE and 8% in PvP. Moving over Blight Ranger, rooted in boosting Arc Staff's reflection, but is primarily seen used for some niche tactics that leverage its out of band orb of power generation. Making it more viable in the broader game without deviating from its fantasy, we've replaced that behavior with elements from Raiju's Harness. Add the ability to cancel your arc staff super while equipped, damaging and blinding nearby enemies and granting a tier 4 arc weapon damage boost. The damage dealt by this effect scales based on the number of projectiles reflected prior to cancelling. No longer creates orbs of power when reflecting projectiles with arc staff, the reflecting projectiles now instead directly refund super energy, extending the duration of your super. Yeah. I think that's a... That's a slight nerf right because you created all these orbs right for your team so that essentially allowed them to pop their supers more as well so i think we're looking at this as kind of a huge nerf to that that whole mechanic there now going over raiju's harness almost all of its old behavior moved to blight ranger we've rebuilt raiju's harness based on its lore tab to differentiate from the other arc staff exotics it now enhances the arc super gathering storm Pulling down lightning around the user when it is activated, above adding a neutral game source of super energy. That's nice, and this would be nice to see, guys. Popping it in that big group of enemies to kind of hit that powerful combatant or boss you're trying to target, and it just annihilates everyone around you in the meantime. <laughs> now, fully rework the behavior of its exotic trait, Mobius Conduit, inspired by its floor tap. Activating the Gathering Storm will call down the lightning on all nearby targets, jolting them while also amplifying allies. Defeating the Arc debuff targets will grant a small amount of Gathering Storm energy. Amazing. Now, Relativism. Asthmatic Hunters have access to lots of stacking melee damage bonuses, which all compound with each other's leading to some out-of-band melee damage. Spirit of Synthoseps already provides a lower bonus if you also have combination blow active. In Revenant, it will provide that same lower bonus when the Stylus Executioner buff is active. Spirit of Synthosep reduce the melee damage bonus provided when both Bionic Enhancements and Stylus Executioner are active by 50%. I'm going over our Titan. Icefall Mantle. Icefall Mantle's core fantasy is all about becoming an invulnerable icy tank. We reworked it to focus on that fantasy by making it all about providing an improving frost armor instead of providing stasis weapon damage. You now gain a stack of frost armor for rapid stasis final blows. Each time you gain a stack of frost armor from any source, you will heal for a small amount. Unique class ability granted by Icefall Mantle now provides maximum stacks of frost armor instead of its custom overshield. You also heal immediately for each stack that gets added. No longer prevents sprinting or jump abilities, and it now works with Ruster as equipped. Class ability energy now begins to recharge immediately after using Icefall Mantle's class ability. Burst stasis energy from the class ability now freezes combatants and slows players. No longer provides bonus stasis weapon damage. Now requires a stasis super to be equipped to benefit from its exotic effects. Remember, Cadmus Ridge Lance Cap. Phyllis Exotic has a fun gameplay loop that's a bit too restricted. They're relaxing some of its requirements. Root a stasis weapon requirement, not any final blow or rap precision hit, while behind a rally barricade, and with a stasis super equipped, will create a diamond lance near you. Directly hitting any powerful combatant with a diamond lance will now create three stasis crystals. Previously, only bosses and vehicles would create additional crystals. Big, big chunk of things, guys.
Ursa Ferosa and Spirit of the Bear. That Unbreakable has been live for a bit, but these exotics could provide additional super energy for using it in PvE. However, the gains provided in PvP were leading to players getting access to their super more quickly than we would like. To increase the maximum super energy gain for Unbreakable in PvE from 15 to 20%, 5% increase. Fix the issue where you were gaining more super energy from Unbreakable in PvP than intended, now provides a maximum of 10%. Over Curus of the Falling Star. Like Curus to feel less required to make Thunder Crash viable, but also improve it to be more valuable across the whole of an activity. We're reducing its Thunder Crash damage multiplier, but when this is combined with the buff to base Thunder Crash damage, the overall damage will remain the same. We're also adding the ability for it to help generate super energy for Thunder Crash, as well as transitioning the exotic to provide damage resistance instead of an overshield to bring it better in line with the arc subclass. Melee final blows while amplified will now grant super energy. Whoa. <laughs> Reduce the damage bonus from Curus to Thunder Crash from 2 times to 1.55 times. This keeps the overall damage similar to what it was previously. They replace the overshield after impact with damage resistance, 50% in PvE and 10 in PvP. Ooh, is Peacekeepers? Peacekeepers changes? While oh, Peacekeepers has been a presence in Crucible for some time, never really felt like it had a real place in PvE content. They've given it some characteristics that resemble Lucky Pants, but for SMGs. A PvE damage bonus that escalates if you deal more damage. Heard rumors it pairs nicely with a couple of the exotic weapon buffs below. <laughs> oh, you guys, you would have seen it in the thumbnail. Wait when we get down to it. Dealing damage to combatants with an SMG will increase the SMG damage for a short time. Maximum of 20 stacks, 100% bonus damage. Lasts for one second. Each hit adds a stack and refreshes the timer. So let's say you're running a kinetic, right? You put on your little kinetic damage bus when you pick up an overpower. You're going to be squeezing out so much SMG damage. Holy. And that's not taken into account if you have things like Rampage or any other damage stacking thing, even target lock. Now, Mask of the Quiet One want to lean into the vampiric nature of this exotic by allowing it to grant access to the potent Devour status effect in addition to its previous effect. The new Rapid Final Blows and Final Blows while at critical health will now grant Devour. This effect requires a Void Super to be equipped with. Ooh. Guys, this can be nutty. Nutty, absolutely nutty in PvP. So it'll be working both in PvP and PvE because it doesn't say it's not going to. No specific. It was already pretty much damn. It's pretty pretty used. <laughs> so hell. Ah, PvP man. <laughs> ah, the stoicism. We felt that limiting spirit of the horn, Alpha Loopy, and Horfrost effect only work with barricades didn't align with the goals of prismatic as a way to break past the limits. So we're updating them to also work with Titan's Thruster ability. Through the horn, activating Thruster will leave a ball of solar energy behind, exploding and applying Scorch to enemies caught in the blast. Spear of Alpha Loopy, activating Thruster, heals you and nearby ally. Oh. This could be very nice here, guys, based on the value when you pair this type of stuff up with Heal Clip. You get a lot of healing going. Spirit of Horror Frost, activating Thruster will spawn a spare the Stasis Crystals. Now our Warlocks, our beloved Warlocks. Valador's Wrath Weavers, further enhancing the exotic support capabilities while tweaking it to allow the bonus Super Shatter damage to be more useful in a raid environment. So adjusting the Heart of Ice perk, increase the Shatter damage of targets frozen by Shade Binder Super Projectiles by 100% regardless of who breaks them out. Now added, granting frost armor to your allies with frost both or winter's wrath will grant you super energy. Ranges in potency based on how many allies it is granted to. Oh yeah. <laughs> so as I mentioned here in that raid environment, you have up to five allies to benefit that potency off of. Spell of Dire, 
um, Kara to help you sling more Nova Bombs. You're giving a neutral gain benefit. The Skull of Dire um, Kara that feels fitting for the Void Walker playstyle. Added weapon defeats while Devourer is active will grant super energy. Ranges from 1% to 4.5 depending on the target type defeated. Very nice. You pretty much always have um, Devourer up as long as you're getting kills to keep refreshing that timer. And supers are going to be plentiful. They're actually making changes to Sanguini Alchemy. Oh. <laughs> Warlocks have some of the lowest exotic armor variety in PvP, and for a while it has felt like they were missing a target, marking exotic in the same realm as Knucklehead Radar or One-Eyed Mask. What better candidate to fulfill that role than the one that already used to do it? Sanguini Alchemy. Want to be careful and make sure that the target marking can feel unfair to fight in Crucible like it did in its original iteration. I also wanted to make sure it was in line with the soon-to-be upcoming close near state of Knucklehead Radar. To activate target marking, you must damage a target from within a rift, and the mark will fall off after 5 seconds compared to the just look at them and get 7 seconds of marking the current KR. Now, March targets you damage while staying in a rift, you'll deal 10% extra damage any source against marked targets. It will now provide a surge times 4 to weapons that match your super damage. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I see this one already, guys. Um, on, let, me, let me jump off the mark a little bit. 10% extra damage from any source against marked targets. You're going to run this bad boy with... um. Shit, I just lost it in my head. But... um. Hell, you guys know what I'm talking about. Our beautiful solar pulse rifle that we just got. Ah, think and think, think. Hold on. We're gonna, I'm gonna find it right now. Um, thinking, thinking. Red Death. There it is. Red Death. <laughs> Going over Red Death. Because also with that, when you're at low HP, you're also dealing extra damage to enemies by that percentage. We'll put it on the screen here. And we're back through the editing process. You're also going to get another 10% extra damage from any source against your marked target, provided you're in your rift. And then you're getting a surge times 4 to the weapon that matches your super damage. In this case, you'll be running a solar super, because Red Death is solar. Oh, we're going to be cooking, guys. Warlock, rejoice. We're going to absolutely be cooking people in PvP. Let's go. I'm going over Verity's Brow and Spirit of Verity. We're front-loading more of the bonus grenade damage for this exotic to increase its potency, even if you aren't able to build to full stacks. First stack of death throws now provides plus 40% grenade damage in PvE, up from 20%. Each additional stack now provides plus 15% grenade damage, up to a maximum of 100% at 5 stacks. Now, unchanged in PvP. Yes, guys, yes. This, this is going to be good. And I felt it was pretty strong now. So it's getting buffed. <laughs> and Cenotaph Math, we heard your feedback that hiding the target marker from the player wearing Cenotaph was confusing, and so we were reverting that change. Walking it back, they're not standing on business. Damaging a vehicle boss or champion with a trace rifle will once again visually mark the target for the player using Cenotaph. Some awesome anti glove changes. Feel frustrating to play against in PvP. They can allow cold snap sneakers to catch players in ways that feel unfair. Wanted to address that without adjusting the bonus grenade energy they provided to keep their PvE viability intact. They reduce the increased seeker distance and speed by 50%. <clears throat> Guys, skill issue. Let's be completely honest here. If you were getting seeked out by these, these little things on the ground, it was peak skill issue. <laughs> Speaker's Sight. We pretty rapidly pulled the parachute on Speaker's Sight's orb generation in Crucible as it made for some less favorable play patterns. After some iteration and internal play testing, we think we've landed in a spot where we can bring back the orb generation in Crucible without encouraging self-damage and stalling at the start of a match. Six instances of healing a damaged ally in Crucible will spawn an orb power. Amazing changes thus far, guys. Those are all the main exotic ones regarding each class. Now, super damage exotic tuning. Revenant, we're taking a pass at balancing the potential damage output provided to one shot. 
super abilities by the exotic armor pieces that enhance them. Our goal is to better standardize damage across the various options while ensuring that supers that are more challenging to use will require the player to put themselves in a disadvantaged position are more potent. There's a list of exotic and super combinations we're looking to dial in. Think about how much damage they will put out after this update. The highest damage at the top noted how much each super plus exotic damage will be changing as well. Now, Curious of the Falling Star plus Thunder Crash Unchanged. Power Gale Gauntlets plus Burning Maul, 10% buff. Spirit of Star Eater plus Nova Bomb, 12% nerf. Spirit of Star Eater plus Twilight Arsenal, a 26% nerf. Spirit of Star Eater and Needle Storm Unchanged. Star Eater with Storm's Edge Unchanged. Celestial Nighthawk plus Golden Gun, minus 5%. Only bosses versus bosses only. Champions and whatnot, you shouldn't feel it on them. As I mentioned earlier, I'll leave a link down below in the YouTube pin comment, or you guys can pause here and kind of read over this. It's pretty much just breaking down their changes for these. Let's keep it moving. We have a stack quad, a weapon tuning, and new mods for Revenant. Now, loads of changes going over the weapon archetype. We wanted to encourage more accurate gunplay in PvE without making content feel like a slog, so we've made a small redistribution of the damage dealt by most primary weapons. In practice, this means slightly increasing the critical hit damage while reducing the body shot damage by a corresponding amount. Every subfamily has been tuned by hand, but they all generally fall within the 5% to 7% range as noted below. Now, regarding your auto rifles, scout rifles, pulse rifles, sub, sidearms, and hand cannon, to rebalance how PV damage is dealt to slightly prioritize critical hits. Increase critical hit damage by between 5 to 7%, depending on the frame. Decrease the body shot damage by between 5 to 7%, depending on the frame. Now, going for heavy bursts, which will include Graviton Lance Revision 0, increase the RPM from 300 to 324. Increase damage in PvE by 18% for legendary weapons in this subfamily. Graviton Lance and Revision. Heavy Burst Mode reduced by 8%. Interesting there. Here's a huge one for me, guys, and I think a lot of you as well. Sniper rifles have felt out of place in PvE content for quite some time. Without any defined role if they are not top tier for DPS. We want to change that and further reward using snipers against more than just bosses. So we've greatly increased their non-boss damage and greatly reduced their flinch against combatant crucible. While it is a positive that players feel they can challenge snipers and not worry about being shot through flinch, the amount of camera movement the flinch imparts is unnecessarily jarring. We're going to begin walking that back until we find an acceptable middle ground. <laughs> I told you guys they would walk this one back. <laughs> Reduce flinch against combatants by 50%. Reduce the camera roll against players by 10%. But mainly here. Large, large damage outputs. Miners, 60%. Majors, 75. Mini bosses, 35. And champions, 25. Oh, yeah, guys. Oh, yeah. And it's funny they do this now. So I'm wondering, um, maybe Act 2 or Act 3 of our artifacts if we'll get some things focused on the snipers again because you would have thought they would have did this for Episode 1 since we actually had some sniper artifacts in there but I digress all my Izanagi burden users as well as Still Hunt you should find these changes very welcoming the Goliaths are going to get a more substantial overhaul in Episode Heresy but for now, we wanted to correct a long lingering issue. It was the magazine side to be incorrect depending on your perks. Pretty much a bug fix, where perks that change the magazine could sometimes display incorrect preview values. Shotguns are getting some work as well. They struggled to find their identity in PvE, and World War Fusions and Rocket Sidearms are strong and less risky to use. We have taken the step of greatly increasing their range in PvE only allow players to utilize them at slightly safer distances and high-end content. 
Now the shotguns, minimum damage after fall off have been increased from zero to 40% versus AI only. Ah, I don't like this one, guys. Rocket assisted sidearms are kings of mountain and PvE right now. In a large part, this stirs from their ability to be effectively used as a primary weapon. We'll be taking a larger look at their dominance and accuracy. But for now, we we'll reduce their ammo reserves by 25% to make them not quite as freely usable without building into special ammo. Rocketed assisted sidearms reduce reserve ammo by 25%. Now this is a, uh, I like to say this is, um, let's go hand in hand with our new exotic we're getting. That's a part of the pass. That stasis primary, um, stasis grenade launcher. As once you fill up that meter, you guys have probably seen about it already. We'll do a more in-depth dive on it when we actually get some hands-on. But essentially with that, you could create your special bricks for you and your allies. So noticing a reducing reserves here shouldn't be too bad. You could run your GL as a primary, which is primary, so unlimited ammo. You can have your secondary rocket sidearm being that solar one that we got with episode one echoes, or you can rock out with your indebted kindness, all up to you. So as long as you kind of, you know, spec things differently, you shouldn't, shouldn't mind that too much. Now, trace rivals can be strong in the right hands and crucible, but for most players, they're too ammo hungry to get good use out of them. So they've increased the base, spawn, and crate to PvP ammo from 25 to 29. <laughs> 25 to 29. Will this be substantial? Find out. <laughs> right now, adaptive machine guns are the strongest in both crucible and PvE. But we feel high impacts have some room to grow, so we have increased their critical hit damage slightly. They've increased the critical hit damage by 4%. Now, heavy ammo grenade launchers have turned. Do something of a fire in the general direction and get kills weapon. It also benefits from having a substantial amount of ammo in both sandboxes. We want to push them slightly more in the direction of accurate fire on stronger targets and reward direct impacts. In addition, rapid fires have lingered on the low end for a while through directly buffing their damage to be more competitive. So going over the heavy ammo ones, general decreased the damage from detonation by five against combatants, but they've increased the projectile impact damage correspondingly globally. In PvE, total damage is the same, split differently between detonation and impact. So visually, it should just look a little different. PvP, heavy GLs now do approximately 7% and 26% more impact damage depending on the blast radius stat. The rapid fires increase the frame impact and detonation damage by 7%. Now maybe in PvP you'll see some more GLs again, you know, versus people running their machine gun. I think mapping will have a, a big thing to do with that, but we'll definitely see when we have trials going on. I'm going over some PvP weapon micro tuning. Let's say pause here. I'm gonna spend too much time on the miscellaneous things. We have some nerfs here to the adaptive hand cannons. Base damage from 44.7 to 44.5. We're tweaking minor values to kind of keep them in line. You gotta really see how everything plays out. And then the crit damage, so the headshot will be from 80.3 to 80.1. Slightly reduces three tap range once the damage fall off has begun. They just keep, they keep clapping down on the hand cannons. <laughs> Adaptive auto rifles, critical hit damage from 26.5 to 26.25. Reduce forgiveness against high resilience tier. High impact pulse rifles. Grit from 40.1 to 39.6. Lowers the resiliency threshold to four six crits instead of five crit one body to five. Now there's some buffs across the board. Adaptive some machine guns. So 10.9 for base damage to 11.5. Essentially decrease the body shot time to kill. Precision autos, base damage 19 to 19.4. Crit 33.6 to 33.95. Essentially reduce the nerf they received in Into the Light by about 50%. Now high impact autos, base damage from 22 23, so a full, full point difference. And then crit hit damage from 40.1 to 41.4. Slightly increase the forgiveness and range after damage fallout. Now at the top of my head, I'm not really sure what high impact autos we have right now. 
Um, I want to say I think Age of Bond is a high impact. I would like to I would like to think that. But we should see high impact be a little more favored now. Now precision hand cannon to base damage. 40.4 to 45.3. That's a huge jump. A critical hit damage from 70.25 to 70.2. Essentially decreasing the body shot time to kill. Now going into our heavy burst hand cannons, base damage from 23.8 to 24. Critical hit damage from 49.6 to 52.8. Essentially increasing the forgiveness and range after damage fallout. For better interaction with those damage boosts. Then we have some heavy burst both rifle changes. A crit from 41.95 to 42.55. RPM increase to 320. Essentially decreasing the optimal time to kill from 0 0.87 to 0 0.8. An aggressive scout rifle with crit from 91.1 to 91.8, essentially allowing better interaction with the damage booth. Exotic weapons for a revenant exotic weapons balance path. We focused on weapon types and elements that would be featured in the artifact, as well as those that had been in need of some love for a while. Require of one ship, just a little bit hot in PvE. They've already talked about this, what, a month ago or so? That they would essentially be nerfing these coming with the next episode. So, there'd be a reduction from base reserves, 250 to 200. Max reserves, 384 to 300. Reduce the impact damage of the point blank projectiles by 50%. I think we're going to feel that one more. 50%. <laughs> but they've increased the hip fire projectile damage against players by 10%. Now starts with 7 ammo in Crucible and gains 7 from crates and ammo brick. Interested to see if this will make it usable in there or not. Now Huckleberry has been overshadowed by many more recent exotic, so we wanted to give it something a little more exciting. It now fully reloads on kills and replace Catalyst with Kinetic Tremor. Woo! <laughs> Remember earlier guys, they talked about that Titan change with the Peacekeepers making it fully function uh, with SMG, so essentially while you're dealing SMG damage, you're increasing the damage of SMGs that you're using. Now Huckleberry fully reloads on kills, and then it's going to be procking Kinetic Tremors. Kinetic Tremors will apply that damage based on the max amount of damage you're doing. That's going to look disgusting. <laughs> the Teraba can be a beast in the right situation, but can struggle in higher end content. I took a note from Risk Runner to try to help solve that. So when the Ravenous Beast is active, you'll gain damage resistance against incoming solar damage. 50% versus combatants, 15 versus player. Uh, some symmetry work as well. Now I'm getting a stack of dynamic charge on kills in addition to precision hit. I've been pleading for this one for a while, and I'm glad we're getting it. Now duality has been popular in PvP for its versatility for long while but has not been able to compete against similar options in pve it made it a bit easier to activate this perk and keep going alongside the above global shotgun changes duality on black wings the stacks for max effect will be reduced from five to three they'll extend the duration of the buff from seven to ten seconds oh i like that one too sarah <laughs> this shit that could be meta right there man with your titans inside of um pve Depends on how much damage you can squeeze out of that. It, it should be just racking down them champions, to be honest. <laughs> and then, you know, you tack on uh, when you pick up an overpower, and then you get the little kinetic surge and all that good stuff. Oh, we should have been for a treat there. Now, Bad Juju has a hard time getting its kill streak going in PvE, especially in hiring content. They made some changes there to reach higher stacks of the string of curses a bit easier. They've increased the lifetime of string of curses from 3.5 base to 5.5 base, 7.5 with the catalyst. Increase the mag size from 27 to 36. The weapon also appears to have become more haunted than it used to be. Oh. <laughs> An X Deer is fairly hard to use, more ammo hungry compared to similar options. Got a significant enough payout, made some adjustments to make this easier to use, and also allow the weapon to scale a bit better to higher end content. Multiple things across the board. Increase direct hit damage with combatants by 33%. Adjust the recoil and projectile to have a much flatter trajectory by doing the following. 
Reduce camera recoil from firing by 50%. They've increased the projectile velocity, reduced the projectile gravity, plus five ammo in reserve. You now spawn a moth on two direct hit. Reduce the moth cooldown from four seconds to three. It's also shared with the kill trigger. Very nice. Fighting Lions, so has a dedicated fan base. This has been overshadowed by more recent additions to the sandbox. We've added something to help it fit into some void centric builds. So now spawn a volatile burst on direct hit. Oh boy. <laughs> Prospector's exotic perk has long been something largely impractical to most activities, made significant changes to make the weapon more viable, but still remaining true to its core cool fantasy. We spawn three powerful cluster bombs on detonation, doing substantially more damage per shot over a much larger area than previously. Move the sticky grenade, flame grenade, and remote detonation function. Max size reduction to six. Bonus ammo reserves on the catalyst change to plus 50 reload speed. Also getting some chaperone work. Nice. The ability to trigger roadboard on two rapid precision hits. Precision hits with the Roadborne active will also extend it by 3 seconds. You're getting 20 stability, 25 reload speed, Roadborne active. They've increased the base ammo reserve. Lumina work as well. We're shouted by a bit by support auto rifle since their release, so we did a pass over it to let the weapon inherit some of the new things it made for those autos. So updated hipfire projectiles to behave more closely to support auto rifle healing shot. Lumina users you should find that very nice. All right, now some weapon perk. In Revenant, we have corrected an issue where the sever buff debuff was not appropriately reducing outgoing damage for players. Now Slice will correctly work in Crucible. Manage the invisible cooldown on this perk in comparison to Slide Shot has uh, been a long-standing annoyance, so we have fixed that. Slide waves can now be refreshed if you slide again following the completion of the initial slide. Oh yeah! Hey. Now, typically before what you did, you slide, switch weapons, switch back, slide again. That negated that whole thing. Now, slide right after completion. Now, just to name a, a very powerful craftable weapon that functions slide way, your Chattered Bone. I think you should see this rise a bit more now. That you can just keep pretty much endless ammo in that thing now without too much other factors. What type of internet do you have? Widen the trigger on alloy mag so it provides value more often. Alloy mag now increases reload speed when the magazine is near empty. Two auto loading perks have long and ah. Oh. A lot of kickbots today, guys. I don't know what the hell about that. Good to see you, Vicious Gaining. Hope you're well and happy Thursday. Two auto loading perks have long been too high value for their effort in comparison to similar options, so we're making them take a bit longer to trigger their effect. With that in mind, we're adding more perk options that are viable and damage rotations that require a bit more effort from the player. Auto load increased time to reload by one second for both base and enhance. Reconstruction, increased time to start reloading by two seconds for both base and enhance. Master of Arms working at stack up to two times, times one will grant 15 damage increase for seven seconds, times two will grant a 25% damage for four seconds, drop back to one when the timer expires. Very nice. Dealing with damage from the storm. Oh, you're along that, along that path of um, what was it called, Helen? Barely skated past us. We just got a lot of rain here and there. Hope everyone's been staying safe. I know some people got hit hard by it. Earth output. Uh, going over Dawning Origin. Remove the time limit between kills. Now requires kills in a life instead of in rapid succession. Ironbender perks have long been divisive on their use due to their stat downsides. So reducing the downsides. Iron Reach, Iron Gaze, Iron Grip. Reduce the stat penalties. Minus 30 to minus 20 at base. Minus 25 to minus 15 for the enhance. Very, 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 very good. 
Uh, so you can see. Weapon mods. The landscape of weapon mods has been a bit stale for quite some time, so we're adding a number of new weapon mods to add a bit more variety. The set of mods is testing the waters for potentially adding more mods in future releases. It's about damn time, Bungie. You put on you put on your big girl panties, you put your thong on, Bungie, and you give us the content that's gonna make this game thrive. Now adding several new weapon mods, these can be equipped on enhanced or crafted weapons. Here's the list broken down by category. Combo stat mod bundles two stats plus six plus six respectively. Ballistics, range and stability, tactical reload handling, aerodynamics, blast radius into projectile speed, tension, draw time accuracy, edge, charge rate guard resistance, anti-flinch, 15% flinch reduction, we have some ammo finder enhancement, special finder, roughly 10% faster per kill with this weapon. Interesting. Heavy finder, roughly 10% faster per kill with this weapon. Optics mod, allows customization of weapon zooms. Hold on, let's go back here really quick. Um, They kind of, they touch on this here. You can quote me on this, but if you were essentially using an exotic kinetic weapon, it allowed you to find the ammo faster. So I think based on this, they're just building it into it. So it doesn't have to be an exotic weapon. That's kind of what I'm getting from this. Unless the exotic weapons will still have that intrinsically built into them if they're kinetic, right? Use primary ammo. And then these are kind of just for like your purple weapons. They don't necessarily display that too much. So they read it here. It says mods, so I guess your purple weapons, wherever you could put a weapon mod on your adept weapons so do keep that in mind and then optic mod allows customization of weapon zoom the marksman optics sniper rifle down to linear scouts bows machine gun trace and rocket launchers you have high zoom plus two uh the low minus two zoom you got cqc optics now these will run your hand cannon pulse autos sub sidearm fusion reach grenade launcher your drum grenade launcher High plus one zoom, low minus one zoom. Synergy, escalating chance to spawn a subclass bobble matching this weapon's damage type. Kinetic weapons will spawn an orb of power instead. Stun loader, partially refills the weapon mag on stunning a champion. Here we go, guys. You would, um, I don't think it was called stun loader, it was called something else. Um, but... This is kind of similar to the Vanguard weapons that have that origin trait on them. When you stun a champion, it refills uh, the magazine when stunning the champ. Now this just seems like it's going to be a mod that you can just throw on anything now. That's really good to see. Thoughts on the future. With Revenant in the bag, we're looking ahead to episode here, see and beyond. There's great changes upcoming, including significant updates to Blaze. A particularly underutilized heavy ammo sniper and even aggressive frame fusion rifles. Further down the line, we have big plans for wide changes to the overall ammo economy, introducing more determinism and build crafting options. About time, Destiny 2. It's about time you guys get on get on that train. Hunting scorn with new gear. Speaking of weapons, it's high time we present to you the seasonal weapons dropping along Revenant. They all share the same origin trait called Dark Ether Harvest. Their perks can be enhanced and during Act 1. You have the following seven available. Usually there are some redacted perks in there we prefer you find out about while playing. Now what did they just say? Um, their perks can be enhanced. Does that mean crafted or just enhanced? They may have touched on this before. I don't think these ones will be craftable. Right? They wanted to essentially give us something to grind for, but the, the columns will be enhanceable. I think I think that's what this is. Let me read down more, see if they fully confirm that. We're getting the insurmountable to void precision frames dino. So a poster brace to the pain, threat detector, attrition, demo, air trigger. Column three. Column four, destabilizing desperate measures, one for all, surrounded, rampage, harmony. It's looking good, it's looking beefy. That threat detector. 
and what is that? Right, that threat detector rampage. That'd be your PvP god roll right there. Now sovereignty, void adaptive frame, sniper rifle, EP, Discord, reconstruction, enlightened, no distraction, demo strategist, all three. Here we're speeding things up here. A lot of you guys in hardcore vets should already know about these. And I want to give you guys a general overview of these. When these are all launched, each one will get their respective video on the channel. So do make sure you guys spank that subscribe button hard and ring that bell so you don't miss those uploads. Now we're gonna call them four. Harmony, EM, Desperate Measures, Precision Instrument, Box Breathing, Adrenaline Junkie, Firing Alive. Interesting. Remember, we did read about Sniper is getting that huge buff. So every sniper going forward that we see until they make more tweaks to those values will be extremely good just off those damage buffs alone. Now, um, right in PvE, I'd probably say something like Reconstruction, uh, Precision Instrument, and make it your champion, your champion killer right here. I think that'll do you good. Red tape. Red tape. <laughs> Faces lightweight frame scout rifle. Triple redacted on this bad boy in column three. Oh my gosh, if those three are good, you know this is gonna be a monster. You have keep away on this bad boy, attrition orbs, fourth times, envious. It's even looking like it's gonna pair good in PvE with envious on it. And headstone in column four, high impact, focus, one for all, EP, harmony, rampage. Just off looking at glance, you can run a keep away EP or a keep away rampage for your PvP endeavors. We gotta see what those redacted are. That will be the real deciding factor. We're on a vantage point, we're getting an arc adaptive frame pulse rifle, double redacted in column three, the waste that will deconstruct to the pain, beating frenzy. Column four, you're actually getting volt shot. Oh. Um, what other- do we have any other arc pulse rifles in the game with Volt Shot on it? If not, this could be the first of its kind. One for all, high impact, desperate measures, multi-kill, swash, head seeker. Hmm. So, PvP, keep away, head seeker, tried and true. Let's see what the redactives are. Um, unfortunately it doesn't have one for all. Also, I'm not sure if it's been confirmed or not, but does Volt Shot proc your one for all? Even that would have been good if it was plausible. It makes sense. It sounds like it should. <laughs> now he has Zoo V A. Stasis aggressive frame hand cannon. Put some respect on Stasis. Double redacted in column three. We have triple tap through the pain on core stats raw outlaw. Or in column four. Headstone, Precision Instrument, Desperate Measures, Adrenaline Junkie, Redirection, Harmony, one for all. Um, Looking here, I would say for PvP, to the Pain and Precision Instrument. It actually matches our, um, the Arc one we got over in Episode 1, Echoes. That can roll to the Pain and Precision Instrument. Really just gotta see what the redacted ones are, if they're even useful. A Bittersweet. Arc Adaptive Frame Grenade Launcher, one redacted in column three, Reverberation Strategist, that's for all, Unrelenting, Petrol Motion. Petrol Motion on a Grenade Launcher. Come on now. <laughs> Attribution. Attrition Orbs, Loose Change. Redacted in column four, Cascade Point, Explosive Light, Bait Switch, Harmony, Killing Tally, Frenzy. Hmm. Um, don't quote me on this. Is, our, is this our first killing tally on a grenade launcher? <clears throat> I I think that's the first killing tally on a grenade launcher, right? Now we have liturgy. Stay this. This. Stay this. Double fire grenade launcher. Redacted in column three. Double redacted. We have Envious, Overflow, Reconstruction, Pugilus, Slideways, Surplus. Over in column four. Oh, Chill Clip. Harmony, Lead from Gold, Swash, Chain Reaction. Desperate Measures, one for all. Oh, this one right here is looking good. Oh, it is indeed. 
All right, here we go. As I mentioned earlier, seasonal weapon crafting. Okay, so that developer insight. No, we may have touched on that in that previous video. Future weapon crafting. Those changes are month away. Not ready to share them in detail yet. A new direction moving towards a revenant. Look back into light. Believe that the part of its success the chase of the brave arsenal weapons with the attunement system. Want to move more towards that experience of starting a revenant. The weapons will not be craftable. Perks can still be enhanced using extra materials, and there will be updates to unlock if you play the episode to target specific weapons. You can get extra perks per column. Hmm. That's good, guys. But that is there. That's their way to repopulate the game. But at least it gives you something to grind for. With a four, you would get the things crafted and then you threw them in the vault or something. Or because they were crafted, you probably never crafted them until you decided you wanted to use it. <laughs> Considering now you can waste your enhancement cores to up the level and then go in there and enhance them. There was no need to necessarily waste a vault space when you could just craft it whenever you wanted to. But now for each of these, you're going to be hunting for that best in slot with the multiple column so you can hold on to it and take up that slot bait. So interesting. But now that brings the whole thing of how long are you going to get shafted until you get the one you want. Back to that again. <laughs> so overall, they're really just they're going to probably have the highest um, player retention time and play time during this next episode simply for people just trying to get those roles they want because they have to play the game now to get them that's really what they're doing there i wish they would just come out and say that <laughs> and reprise garden of salvation weapon we'll probably be doing our garden of salvation for the first time but similar to how they reprised the last wish weapons expect that here Oh, the Garden of Salvation weapon. Rejoice. Now, these ones will be craftable. <laughs> the frictured nature of the rotate and the revamp content are more closely aligned with our goals for weapon crafting. So get ready to jump back into the raid. Don't forget to visit Hawthorne at the tower as she will offer a quest. They grant a deep sight version of a weapon every week. The preview of the returning weapons. Highlight some very unique perk combos which think you might find intriguing to say the least. Reckless Oracle, Void Rapid Auto, Destabilizing Paracostal Affinity, Cured Redemption, Kinetic Precision Compound Bow, Offhand, Archer's Gambit, This Reward, Void Rapid Fire Fusion, Destabilizing Reservoir Burst. That one should be juicy. And it's gonna be craftable. Ancient Gospel, Void Adaptive Hand Cannon, Rampage Kill Clip. That should be clean inside of PvP. Sacred Provident, Kinetic Aggressive Pulse Rifle, Demo Kinetic Tremor. Ooh. Big emphasis on kinetic because we have prismatic guys. Any kinetics will fill up both of those bars. So anything procking kinetic tremors is also filling up those bars. Prophet of Doom, Arc Precision Shotgun, Threat Remover, and Volt Shot. Ominiscent Eye, Solar Rapid Fire Sniper for Time Precision Instrument. Ooh. This would be a nice one to, I think, I guess, to compare it with, um, was it Supremacy, which is your Lash Wish Sniper? I think doing a comparison on both of those would be nice in the future. Guys, if you're still, if you're still locked in with me on this reading here, you're amazing. This is a beefy twab, and even more weapons. Look at these bad boys right here. Let's keep this going. We already have a nice preview of the weapons that are coming to Trials of Osiris. I'm gonna pop that out there. I'll include that in here after this in case anyone doesn't know. If it was wrong, not to share some more details what their activities are getting. To share some names and even put some emphasis on interesting facts about them. You have to discover the rest by yourself. Pursuit, fair judgment, stasis, precision auto rifle. Crucible, anonymous autumn arc lightweight sidearm. Competitive deadlocks. Stasis, precision frame, precision frame, shotgun. Finally, now this is looking useful. A previous one we had, the Void Auto Reposit. They have some decent things on there. You can get some decent, decent work done with it inside of PvP. But this is going to be, this is looking like it's going to be similar to when you were hunting down your rose. You're going to be hunting down your deadlock for that god roll. Now Vanguard Op, Wicked Sister. Ooh. 
Strand Adaptive Grenade Launcher. I'm liking the names here. They're coming out with these names. Nightfall. Rake Angle. Stasis Aggressive Glaive. Remember, they already told us over in Episode 3 they'll be doing a, a more focus on their glaives. Though, you may want to get this ready ahead of time. Plug one, arc precision fusion rifle. So that's making a, a return. Interesting. Gambit, by guns, kinetic adaptive pulse rifle. There are even more weapons coming in this episode. Once each new act launches starting October 11th, you also have the new dungeon weapons to try. Let's not forget about the four weapons from season the splicer that are getting reprised. Let us know what your favorite roles are when you get them. New iron banner armor and weapons inbound. Yeah, I'll leave the links and all that. Full close up of everything here. I think the warlock's looking the best in my opinion. Pretty much for the helmet, little detail of the helmet there. Pretty nice. Now, if it's your eyes and the new weapons, pretty sure they will have you very eager to go back into the fray. First weapon is the first ever of its kind. While the second is an old friend, you vitalize the new element. The nauseous mastery. Stasis rocket frame sidearm. Hell yeah. Column 3, air trigger, offhand, deconstruct, enlightened impulse, loose change, preparation. Column 4, Dejo bait switch, chill clip, desperate measures, frenzy, one for all, rounded. They bolted both of these, and that's these are just the two I was thinking of. Loose change and chill clip. It might be that, that PVE one right there. Now Archon Thunder, space is high impact machine gun. Air Trigger, Enlightened, Redacted, Dynamic, and VS Assassin, four times, High Impact. Column four, Desperate Measure, Onslaught, Headstone, Killing Tally, Tap, Target Lock, Rewind. Pretty beefy. This will give your Hammerhead a run for its money. Awesome. And then some miscellaneous BS here. You guys can pause. They're doing some ornament shit, ornament fixes. La la la. <laughs> But we have the re-inverted spire. Inverted spire is a very cool and necessary strike where you fight through some cannons, a cave, and a battlefield until you reach. Normish drill that went so deep it found trouble. Well, it's back with a vex game. Now that it never left, it was still possible to play it in game. It was one of the original Destiny 2 strikes that were bound for an update, and it's the witch coming. Amazing. There's a new narrative to go with it because this time the vex is the main enemy present. That means it will have terrible defenses installed and new units deployed don't you love wyverns going any further would be rude and ruin the fun but you've been warned their first ever discord quest uh starting october 8th play destiny 2 for just 15 minutes on discord and a code for the celestial tie shader to spruce up your fashion once you get your hands on the code head on over to bungie.net slash redeem long to your account redeem your code from there head over to the special deliveries terminal between the cryptarch and the gunsmith in the tower Voila. Hurricane Helene support. And yada stuff here. Can we for Hurricane? Hope everyone well. Direct relief coordinating with local health centers, free clinics, medical needs, made 74 million in medicine and supplies. Other organizations impacted by Hurricane Helen. More details there in those hyperlinks. Play a support port. More additional stuff here. Make sure you claim all your stuff, your season pass, season vendor, Zer, Bungie Rewards, Banshee, Shack, all those goodies. Miscellaneous artwork here. And that concludes our final twa before episode two. And remember to slay and conquer.